so friends let's start now so if you remember in last video we have just did like this no work in my in my video uh, of node.js blog api so we were we were here only and it was doing this thing if we had something uh, i commented out these lines but now you can put those lines just after the, the api routes so that if the route does not match to this one it will execute this function it will send this file so currently i have nothing in this public directory i just have this file so let's go and create in this a folder so first folder will be uh, like css folder so that i'll be i don't want my uh, application to be just the bare bones of html so i just want to implement some sort of styling little bit of styling and next one is i will be creating one more folder in that directory or in the public directory js folder it will con it will hold our uh, files like javascript files so first file i'm gonna make view.js and this will be the cdn version you can download this window so you can download this view.js from view the JS. so if you type in on google you find this thing and you can go and copy or download this video click on get started and you can copy this link either this link or something but in my way i'll just to increase the performance i'll just copy each and everything of this website and get back to my other window and in this file i'm gonna paste this thing so come on b and this is thing is pasted over so view view cdn version is ready to use i am using this local version so this is a view javascript file and this app.js one more changes i have made in my post api i did these these routes only one was this thing to get all the route get all the posts and the second one was to add the post so for that slash add and then another one was i didn't do this one because i forgot to do that at that time so you can write this code in order to get one ap get the single post from the database by using its id so here its id has been passed as a parameter and which is again stored in this variable and after that that id we have found that post from the database using this id so, and after that we have written a JSON response which will send back the post. So make sure your MongoDB shell client is running on port 2707 and if I go to this thing and make Mongo. So it will start a MongoDB shell and here I can simply type in commands show dbs. This is to, this is command use, used to uh, view all the databases that are uh, that are currently available in the in my local computer store so i have been using this blog api app uh, database which i have mentioned it over here uh, in my config folder db.js and if you remember from my last video blog api app so if i want to view the contents of this thing so first of all i will simply type use db blog api underscore app oh sorry not use db it will be simple db use so to find all the collections whatever the, uh, whatever the tables are stored in this database we can directly simply write show collections and it will simply show the post uh, if you remember this is nothing but the schema which we have designed in the models table this post schema or in your case in my last video it will be the blog schema whatever and i have made it one more change in this i just added this updated at directory um, which i'll be using while which i'll be using this thing while making this uh, making update request so this is a put request and one more thing i forgot to do post dot created at equal to date dot now function and simply it will 
store this thing so if i want to view the contents of this post collection so simply i will write db dot post and fine and if i want to if i write this fine currently i ha have nothing in the database so if i want to find uh, if and one move command is there that uh, if i want to make this visible very well properly put well ordered and formatted so find and we can also pass in pretty we can change this with pretty function and this will make that thing look quite uh, in a nice representation as a json object so let's head to over to my google chrome and make sure currently i have haven't started this if you remember that i have installed node mon in my last video so i'll i'll use that thing only node mon and it will take me that server started on port 5000 and database is connected successfully and if you remember this port we have defined this port over here in app.js and here is our port and when the server starts listening and i have used the back text or template string just to use this variable as it as it is in the string format so this is as soon as this server is started so this line is getting printed out here on the console from this come this line and i do i apologize friends because in my last video fonts were not visible i got quite request from the people that fonts are not visible and you have to make increase the font size so i'm trying to do everything whatever makes things good so let's get started to my project and so if i go to this thing and this is index.js file all the routes are made so and i'll be using fetch api instead of doing axios or ajax request which makes the things quite complicated but i'll be using X, uh, fetch api because it's pre-built with es6 and quite useful to, in these days um, but i know everything has its own importance i won't say that other thing is not good but I'll be using fetch APL because this is quite handy for the times, but you'll find there will be often situations where browsers do not support fetch APIs. They will be supporting only the XHR requests. So I have this, uh, I have emit installed. And if I type this thing and press tab, it will take me this. So the title will be simple UI. with view.js and in this course i'll be taking i'll be using bootstrap copy from here which you can download from here so get bootstrap.com and you can copy these links cdn library and if i head over to my in the head section i'll paste those links uh, let's make a word wrap so for word wrap I'm doing what I'm using word wrap don't worry and then for the JavaScript I'll be copying these things and just pasting it over here so these are the scripts first one includes the jQuery slim jQuery second one I'm just trying to make the things as simple as I can second one will be for popper popper.js it's another library which is used for the JavaScript and I paste this thing again and I have already installed prettier in my in my VS code that's why everything is auto formatted and this is that uh, this is his main bootstrap file Strap JavaScript file. So in the end block, I copy this down and paste it over here, and I say. So.
so so far so good we have uh, successfully linked this javascript file and if i want to run this file and if i want to check this thing i will simply type hello world over here and uh, that's when i run to google chrome and if i write local host because make sure because if you remember the server was running on port 5000 and the c bootstrap got kicked in so now if i go back to this thing and start implementing some of the ui but make sure we haven't done the main thing second one file view.js and the crit script and it was in javascript file and we have view.js linked hooked in our application so far i know this word this video is like i will be using cdn version which is not good for production but in this tutorial i'll be trying to uh, implement most of the basics of the view and later later on i will start i will do this again application run with a view cli version which is the latest view 3 and this is our main js file so if i copy this down and i haven't created it yet js main.js and if i i want to make this file main.js and in this folder i haven't created my custom style sheet which i'll be creating it now so style.css so now if i want to just uh, start with this thing so first of all i'll be starting with my navbar and for that you can go to the bootstrap documentation over here and you can find the navbar predefined ready to be used so if i go and write nav bar and first example is there so i'll be copying this thing just pasting it over here because i don't want to look i don't want my application to look bare bones so this is the nav bar and make sure writing comments is a best practice always because this keeps the track what I have done at this stage and what I have done at this stage. So I'll be commenting this thing now bar over here. And I just want to get rid of these some, th some things which I don't want to be there in my, first of all, this form, which I really don't want to be there. Then the second one is this drop down. I want to just get rid of this thing. And I want on the right name simple UI and this will point out to index.html file this self file what we say and this will be home home page is nothing it's a single page application so we'll be simply writing this thing and yeah that's all right and we don't have anything else so I'll just get rid of this thing I'll be covering the basics of UI and I just want to style it left hand side so uh, you have there's a good documentation of bootstrap available you can directly go there and get the things done and I just want to make it by default it will be like this so by default it uh, the day the nav bar will be like this quite white uh, which I don't want so I want to be, it to be dark one and to be blue one so for that I'll write simply primary color and by default primary color is this one and this looks quite elegant and once this is done home page is working and every links are connected in place I just want I just don't want to get into the bootstrap but still I want to do something because I don't want my applications to look like very quite shitty so next thing I'll be creating a var incident instance that is like my so that view view.js can grab this thing and so I'll comment this thing view instance 
and that's why I'll copy this down because I have a good habit of indenting the things and this will be the container so ID will be app because by ID I'm gonna hook everything here by view so for example if I go and write something like message variable and, and if I define a view instead since this main.js file is linked to this thing and if I go to main.js file and if I write const app is equal to new view and element will be since it was grabbed by id so uh, id's name was app value of id was app and if i write data if I return one object return uh, if i define a message and it's nothing but hello word hello word if i write hello word and save this file and i go here and reload so see hello world in this that means view.js is hooked and for more you can go to the view you can install this plugin view.js is not detected and since i'm using your view it's green uh, this defines view.js is detected on this page open dev tools so you can write view.js dev tools extension and you'll find something this thing and you can install this thing so if I go to my root of the application, if I want to inspect the inspect the value of value of this view instance, I can directly go to the console, go to this, and if I install this thing, we'll get this thing view, and here's the root of the application and see the data. And if I want to change this thing here, something else, and if I save this thing, dynamically saved this thing dynamically change this thing so now if I go to go back to this thing and I'm just gonna get rid of this thing and since view instance I've already installed and use that thing here I'm gonna get rid of this message variable which was used here so I'm just gonna first of all we are gonna be having one form here so for that I just have to start a card card and this card will have something like header header and I just want to want it to be blue in background so VG primary and I want also want to be the text whatever is written inside should be in white so I can pass the class text white and I say post form and if I save and go and hit your reload you can see post form so uh, this looks not good so I can go and provide the margin to this card so for top margin we can write this class empty whatever one two three four five whatever value you can save not more than five so if i say, go and write this thing and if i go for reload you can see this thing is pushed down by five so this looks quite amazing but if i go to my post i want to have a card body so dot card body and if i write this thing over here and i just want to open a form here form and I just want don't want any sort of action over here. Later when the form sub when the form is submitted at that event, I'll hook this to this thing to the back end by using the view.js. So I just want to get some input fields. So dot form group and first one is label for this one is the label for the title. Uh, input type text and I'll be providing it with a class of form control this is a bootstrap and build class which will directly access I just want to get a placeholder and it will say post title 
post title. So if I go and start save and hit reload, you can see post title over here. I'll be styling this thing later. And I just want to copy one more time. Uh, after that, I'll be having a text area. So for that, I can again do div dot form group class and this one is the label for body now one more thing i forgot to provide the id that's just for making this pair with this thing so if i write body over here and text area name will be body id also will be body and placeholder will be post body and if i go and reload you can see this thing. this looks very ugly so i'll provide a bootstrap class to it that is form control and it will give me a nice looking post body so label was provided if i click this thing label i'll i'll be trying to explain most of the html element uh, through this video so next thing i just want to have one more one more field which i added in my schema that is the post author so author so i just have to provide this thing currently so div the form group and label for author post author and input type text is fine class will be form control and sorry this will be in double quotes ID will be author, name will be author, and what else? Placeholder will be author. So if I go ahead over and reload this thing, we get a nice looking form ready, but we don't have any input button so far, a submit button. So for that, after this post author, I'll, I'll add another field that is input type this will be submit type and i'll be providing some bootstrap class so that it looks better so btn and the medium size button btn primary and the value of this thing button will be that post and if i head over to my we have a nice looking button so this is just a bare bones. Now I just want to style with CSS, but we haven't linked any CSS file over here except the bootstrap. Bootstrap file CDN. I just want to link custom style sheet, which is in my CSS folder and styles. Custom style. So I just want to add some styling to my, my UI so it will be not too much so which I'll be providing is btn because uh, border radius will be 0 pixels and second one will be dot car again border radius will be And then form control border radius again zero. Then I do want to have alerts which I showed in my preview to this thing for that alert border radius will be zero and whatever the text is inside should be white color so for that hash fff then i'll be having danger alerts also so danger alert danger 
um, for that background will be red color will be as ff again dot alert success and i'll be for the success messages again background will be green which looks quite elegant so the color will be as ff this is point of the color and uh, don't worry about this guys because if you have VS Code installed these colors will be automatically prompted as well whatever the code editor which you are using with your project like 8 Aram or something which, which will directly uh, use this thing so let's get started with my work uh, for example for testing purpose I can go and check out over here see everything looks quite fancy now corner sharp edges in our UI now I just wanted to add one more thing to this thing uh, that is padding to my card because this looks quite amazing so I'll be adding padding of 30 pixels from all over side and by reload this looks quite better isn't it so now next thing which I'll be working on is the card where our posts will be available so far I haven't started with view uh, so for instance like this card get out this card and I want to put one heading over here I just want to add one more class to it let it and be 5 so that we can get a bottom margin of 5 units in bootstrap so I'll write S3 and class will be text center and posts. So <clears throat> this is kind of quite, uh, it's, it's like an application uh, where you can manage all your posts. You can think of this thing like, and if you're a heavy coder. So now I'll be using this template tag. And this template tag is nothing but a, it comes with a view. And first of all, I just wanna re if and if post dot length by default it will be zero. And so far we don't have any post length whatever you can see, but I'll define this thing posts of array, which is null right now. And if this post dot length is zero, the length of this array is zero, not zero, then we'll use this thing. Otherwise, we have we will render another template. V else, and here I'll write something like div dot call twelve. I'll write h5 with the class of text center currently there are no posts available so if I head over to my term uh, if I head over and break reload currently there are no posts available because right now this are array post array is empty and make sure whatever the code you are writing is within this instance step see and so that all the things whatever the properties are defined here we can access them and within this container only within this view instance only so now this thing is done so first of all we want uh, while loading a page we want our post to be available so for that I'll add another property to this view and the methods and here I can simply use this thing uh, here on I'll, I'll be having a load post method function which will load our post so for this Fetch posts over here, then 
fetch is the is the plugin which you are gonna be using which comes and I want to define the URL so if I go to currently go to my this URL whatever I have defined here view post in my routes file that post it will fetch all the data all the it will fetch all the posts from the database so if I go to my URL and I simply write here localhost 5000 API slash post and if I type this thing currently we have no post the post in our database so I have this fetch and this is our URL from where we'll be getting our posts so I copy this down and, and since I'm I'll be using it multiple times I've defined one more variable over here that is URL and our URL that is this thing so I can simply use backticks which can be so uh, I can access this variable over here um, but then since it will return a promise and again then to map this promise so I'll put this in the line as like I like to indent the things properly and if there's any error it will catch that thing and pass it, pass it in the errors object and we can simply log out over here console.log to fetch the post so first of all it whatever the response is coming we have to receive that thing in a response object so which will be a callback to this function so whatever the data which will fetch from this URL will be stored in this response presenting it in a JSON format so for that rest JSON uh, this will simply map that thing and once it is done it will start sending that data over here and we'll grab the data object from here so this the end of the next step so res and if I console dot log res let's see what do we get so if I head over to my simple UI, if I go to my dev tools, and here I can see anything. Why? We did everything, we have done everything right, but why is this not working? This function should work correctly. That's a question. So there are even hooks which you can find is from the documentation, view.js documentation, and you can type in over it, view.js events. hooks and life cycle hooks we can we say this life cycle hooks so there is an you can go ahead over to this page and you can type the thing uh, you can type this thing event log and you can read more about this thing so there's one event hook called create it so I'll be using this thing and this is just outside the method created it's a function basically so we'll write this thing and we'll call this function this dot load post so this this is gonna do what whenever the four page is loaded we have to fire this event uh, this fun uh, fire the function which is defined in our methods so now if I go to this thing and if I reload this thing sorry you are it is not defined oh yeah because this URL is a global variable to this thing so we have to write this thing because out of the scope of this method this thing so URL is a private method of this this function so now if I reload see undefined we are getting undefined since currently we don't have any data we don't have post in the database that's why it's showing undefined 
so next thing is let's go ahead and and so uh, just firstly we want to add one post to the database so for that i'll be using this form so for that if we have this form over here so if i write this thing so whenever this form is let me go to this google chrome and if i reload we are getting still undefined but if i post one this is the body of the post one and if i write nandy nandy over here is my name we got this page reloaded and whatever the data we have passed through this form is in the url so we do have to prevent that thing and for that one event comes so what we can do to hook this thing we can go to our code and whenever this form is submitted we have to catch that event and perform our action make our api calls and send the data to the backend and get the response so for that i simply write you can write v on submit and we have to prevent so this will do whenever this form is submitted we have to fire this at post right and so far we haven't defined this function in the our main.js file so i'm gonna this will fetch the post from the database on page loading so if i go over right here and write at post and if I console dot log here, hello world. And if I say this thing, sorry, semicolons are not generally used, and but I am a hardcore JavaScript developer, so I am used. I'm I'm used to it. So now if I reload this page and if I write something here, and something, something, and if I place, we are getting hello world in the console. So next thing is how to hook those values from here. How to hook those values from here to our backend, uh, like our in our JavaScript file. So for that, I'll be defining one more post object, which will contain our title, which will be initially null, then which will be which will be nothing empty string, not null. Then we'll be defining our body and this will be also nothing and then author which will also be null and I will do like we are in the title so we'll simply write over here we model and we want to access the post title over here so whatever the value of this post title is now we can directly get over here and for this post.body we'll simply write v model post.body and in this third one we have the author you can write anywhere but i like to do the things in a better way and this will be we are accessing post.author So now if I head over to my dev tools and if I reload this page and I go to my view CLI instance currently if I see we have post object in here with the property with the keys author body and title. So if I write something here make make the change uh, notice the change over here. If I write something over here hello world see if I make the change this is the hello world post see it's changing so now we have dynamically bind this thing with our post object keys and author is again and you're gonna sick you're gonna get sick of my this name throughout my youtube channel and if i want to if i go here and make one more thing if i console log over here 
this dot post object and if I reload again if I go to my console over here so post one this is the body for the post one author is uh, right now Charles Dewey it's my favorite book so habits this is about the habits book and if I post this thing see we got our server console already over here so it has a title it has an author it has body so while firing this event we want to make an API call which will send out this post object to the backend we are going to be doing this thing and the method type will be the get uh, post type so if I go ahead over and write here fetch this will be a fetch API so if I write this thing again since we are having URL property and this make sure this is working and if I write this URL slash s since we have this URL over here with add attribute over here in the URL so I want to access this thing and this method will be I'll be passing one object over here which will define our method will be post type because since it's a it will make a post request then the body of the content will be json dot stringify this dot post and it will stringify this thing this chase this javascript object into a string json stringify format and all, we'll be also adding headers if you remember my from my last video we were using headers in headers content type was application slash json json so this was the object which will be passed and it will be having a callback because last time if you remember we have we were getting something and this will give me a response from back and I will map that response to res.json and then again this will give me a callback and that will be again a response and if I write this thing here let's first of all let's console log this thing this response res and if i head over to my terminal i write this thing so we don't have any error right now and this is undefined because we don't have any post in our database habits this is an amazing book by Charles Duhigg and if I add this post we are not getting anything but if I head over to this thing see our data is created in the database and if I go to my console and in my MongoDB shell if I type this command, we have see we have our data stored in our database MongoDB shell. So this is the way how we can access those things. But I don't know why this is not working here. So let's fix that out. Let's make the data. And this will give a callback data. And write data by saying this thing let's catch some catch for some errors over here so uh, it will accept uh, it will throw an error object and console.log error so if i reload head over to my terminal and reload something python bigness this was my last video if you want to check it out you can check it from my database this is the video tutorial for Python simply out of this handy and handy. I don't know why I spelled it wrong. Again, I'm gonna get undefined. 
if I see in my console, then another post created. So yeah, I made a mistake. Instead of mapping in another function, I just have to map it right now. So if I now console.log this data, and if I console this log this data property, and if I let's say this is new and author is name that's my let's write my sister's name Tanya Maria and if I post this thing see we are getting this data back from the databases and if I head over to my backend terminal we have now three posts in here so if I go to now I want something UI, something to do with the UI. So for to get notified, get alerts. I'll be making one function over here, and this function will do. This function will be doing dealing with the alerts. What type of alerts we're gonna use? So we'll be doing get alerts. Yeah, make sure you put comma after every method you make and I'll be adding some couple of variables in here at the top of the view instance. So one is this post and there is then I'll be adding mode. This will be helpful and initially it is set to set to false and then I'll be having a status method that will be again set to false then message will be again set to it will be a null string uh, it will be empty string then alert type is another variable it will map our which sort of error alert is this is it a success success alert or a failure error and then we have already defined our url over here now if i save this thing and if I go to my alerts, so this method will accept two parameters in it, two arguments. One will be the message, the other will be class name. And so before completing this we I want to add a couple of things in my root of the app. So first one will be this thing here in a container just above the card alerts all right uh, div all right and div and to bind the dynamic class to any div we can directly use this thing or we can write we bind and this thing we bind class and the shorter way is this thing so I'll be binding this thing and this will be nothing but alert type and this we will define and this will be only popped up when the value of status will be true okay so v if status and whatever the message is here, we'll simply put that message out. Now if I save this thing and if I get head over to it, this thing. And if you remember, we have defined this thing. Uh, the Most of the things of this class, we have already defined. So this dot, firstly we'll set this, this status variable to true if we want to put that thing out, echo that thing out then the second thing we'll be doing this dot alert type will be I'm using template string again alert alert and this will be simply class name which will pass it from there and the next thing will be the this dot message equal to message so remember this is a global message variable which I have defined here in this view instance here 
and this message local member of this scope of the function so we cannot access this message variable outside but we can access this message variable by using this keyword anywhere in this instance so and to for the animation like we can set we can use the event set timeout function this will accept one function uh, and for three seconds i'm writing 3000 and after this after the time 3000 milliseconds is passed we want to set that thing back to the original state status equal to false again and the start message to null is empty string again and then this dot alert type to null again if i save this thing over here oh sorry yeah now when the data is passed and we want to check whether the data is saved in our database so for that if i go to my post route if there any error is occurred it will send this thing status false status will be the data if i go to my this console object and if i go to this thing created an updated post and there's a message over here and success is true right so we are accessing this property which is sent from here if the post was added this will send a true if the post was not added this will send a false right and with this message so we'll be accessing these values in a, from the json object we'll be we'll be using those values as a to load our messages so if i right now i just want to i will check what type of data was there if it was success or failure so for that i want to type data dot success the data value is success or else I will simply write here this dot get alerts method we are calling this alert method and we are passing first one will be the message data dot message parameter then second the value will be it's a success type success and if I write over here and if it is not and if this thing is happened we want to clear out this post object also so you want to set the values of this post object as a null again so I'll simply write this dot post dot author equals to null uh, empty string again sorry I'm writing I'm saying null again and again post dot title is again an empty string this dot post dot body is again an empty string and after that I will be saying this I have echoed out everything and after that will be just simply loading all the posts again and this dot post dot push will push that thing here push in our this post object so that to make it quite user friendly and we don't have to reload again to, in order to get the current latest post so we'll push that thing since the success callback is returning on post object also right so we can access this thing by using data dot and if I write and if anything goes wrong we can directly echo this thing out on the screen but the dull alert is and data dot message is fine so let's head over here and 